Ονομάζομαι Μαρία Σταύρου, είμαι από το Γραφείο Περιβάλλοντα Ασφάλεια και Υγεία και σήμερα στο σεμινάριο μα θα δούμε πώ μπορούμε να. How to work with students with special educational needs. I'm going to uh, go to English, okay, as we have English speakers. Uh, so at the university at the moment we have two types of disabilities. We have learning difficulties and physical disabilities. Uh, learning disabilities are problems that affect the brain's ability to receive, process, analyze or store information. These problems can make it difficult for the student to learn as quickly as can make uh, to, as someone uh, who isn't affected by learning difficulties. There are many kinds of learning disabilities and most students affected uh, by them have more than one kind. Uh, physical disabilities is the condition or function just to be significantly impaired relatively to the usual standard of an individual or group. The team uh, the term is used to refer to individual functioning including physical impairment, sensory impairment, cognitive impairment, intellectual impairment, mental illness and various types of chronic disease. Um, at the fall semester we have 35, 37 students with uh, physical disabilities and 59 students with learning, which is uh, if we can see it as a total, we have 61% uh, percent of the students that have uh, learning difficulties, rather than 39 with physical. Uh, here I have a, part, uh, a chart pie that says, that indicates how many <coughs> students we have with different kinds of dis uh, disability for physical disabilities. As you can see, we have visual impairment, hearing impairment, epilepsy, anorexia, uh, we have anxiety, Asperger's uh, syndrome, some that here you cannot see, tetraplegia, allergies, uh, depression and mo many, many more. Okay, and for learning difficulties, the, the most of our students have dyslexia, the, which is 49%, 10% have AD and ADHD, and the rest 41% have different types of the, uh, disability, which is dysarrhythmia, this, uh, dysorthographia, and many others. Um, the, what we offer as a university to these students is uh, the identification process begins at the admissions department, where a student comes to the university to register, and at, at the application forms there is a special box that says, do you suffer or for, from any difficulties, disability? So the student there can declare that they have a disability. And then decision uh, comes from the head of the department. The health and safety office is responsible for the student with physical disabilities, where the senior academic officer is responsible for the students with learning difficulties. Um, the documentations that we accept as a university for learning difficulties, we accept uh, certifications from GESI Council Center, which Ms. Petronda can explain to you later, and from other assessment uh, centers, uh, where physical disabilities, uh, the certification comes from physician or other medical centers. After add and drop period of each semester, the health and safety office with the academic officer sends the memo to all the faculty members who have students that have uh, physical difficulties. Uh, now Dr. Stasinos will continue to explain you in details uh, for learning difficulties. Let me first explain that uh, uh, Samuel Kirk professor of special education at the University of Illinois, was the first scientist uh, who proposed the term uh, learning disabilities to refer to students facing serious problems, difficulties, particularly with the written language. We mean use and understanding, let's say reading, writing, spelling, and or calculated. I had the opportunity to meet him in Stirling of Scotland uh, in 1978 during the works of a large international congress on special education taking place there. The term learning disabilities since then has been accepted by the scientific community 
and it appears very often in the international bibliography, books, journals, regarding education and psychology. Uh, learning disabilities may be not always very serious problems and is expected to face them easily. In other words, in the case uh, it is not necessary to use a specific program and or a proper strategy to face them. For example, the case of a student who initially face, uh, uh, faces a problem with the learning of a foreign language, listening, writing, reading, and or with the use of a technological mean, means. In a short time, it is expected for the student to solve his problem, so no other uh, strategic uh, needed. Specific learning disabilities refer, refer to serious and or very serious problems of the student who needs special help to effectively solve them. The student with learning disabilities experiences usually significant learning difficulties that cannot be explained by other well-known impairments and or disorders. Let's say mental retardation, sensory impairment, motor handicap problems, uh, emotional disorders and uh, behavioral problems, and or environmental, cultural or economic disadvantage or lack of educational opportunity generally. In other words, students with learning disabilities have normal or upper mental uh, uh, level development. The intelligence level. The intelligence level of the student with learning disabilities is usually normal and in some cases superior. Uh, this is a research evidence uh, that uh, could be translated as challenge, as being challenge, a challenge for the role of the teacher and or lecturer in the classroom. Specific learning disability. This is a term, a very well-known uh, term in the scientific community. Uh, it's a serious disorder in one or more psychological processes involving in understanding or in using language, spoken or written which may manifest itself in an imperfect ability to listen, so listening, uh, to think, thinking, to speak, speaking, reading, writing, and or spelling, or to do successfully mathematical calculations. Dyslexia is a common form of specific learning disability. It's a Greek language. It's manifested when the accurate and fluent reading and or spelling of words is developed incompletely or with a great difficulty as compared with the mental and chronological age of the students. Let me uh, note the words accurate and fluent reading. In other words, uh, a student with uh, dyslexia can read and can write, but it's, uh, uh, he cannot read accurately and fluently. This is the difference. Some interesting points. Dyslexia is indeed a serious and insist problem of children and youth. I mean insist in the, uh, in the time. Uh, let's say uh, a dyslexic child or student uh, is not dyslexic only for some, let's say, um, days or some weeks or some months. Maybe uh, if uh, we um, we cannot help him, it may be for years or for all the life. This is a problem. Accordingly, uh, according to bibliography, uh, many socially successful people had usually an experience with dyslexia 
in their previous uh, school, let's say, uh, life. The prevalence of uh, learning disabilities is by, the, by far the largest in number of a special education categories. That's why we, can, we have the same picture in our university. Children with dyslexia represent about the uh, two to eight percent of school population. It means that in every classroom, we may expect one or two pupils uh, having dyslexia of one or another type. There are some types of dyslexia. Let's say um, uh, uh, optical dyslexia or autistic. Uh, dyslexia. Uh, it um, uh, depends on the type of difficulties of uh, the child. Some signs and symptoms of the dyslexic child uh, usually reads slowly and often painfully. Experiences errors in word recognition. This is a basic difficulty and in word recording as well. So a wide disparity between listening comprehension and reading comprehension of a text. Has trouble with spelling. Uh, spelling means uh, just uh, uh, referring from uh, the voice to the symbol, to the symbols, to the written symbols has trouble with spelling and especially with spelling of a new or a long word. Many have difficulty with handwriting or with math computations. So uh, for the teacher or for the uh, parent, it's difficult to read the handwriting of a child with uh, dyslexia. May, uh, also the child itself may may have uh, may may faces may face difficulty with reading his writing exhibits difficulty in recalling uh, some words he usually knows substitutes one small side word uh, for another because of its visual and or content similarity how to communicate with learning disabled? There are some, let's say, uh, ways or uh, practical or guides. Listen carefully to the students' possible questions or requests regarding facilities, provision, for understanding more easily the content of the lesson. Try to communicate properly with the student in a warm, and open-minded climate. Let me uh, uh, say again, in a warm and open-minded climate. This is a basic atmosphere that we need to uh, uh, have in the classroom for uh, those uh, students. Use a multisensory teaching approach and according to the students' needs. Use available new technology means and facilities in the class, taking into account the content of the lecture. Give short guidelines during the lecture time. Provide a handout or uh, an outline with the basic points at the beginning of each meeting in the class. Use suggest books, use or suggest books, uh, on tape or books with pictures and or tables. Allow the students to record lectures and try to answer to his possible questions. Uh, they used to ask uh, very often questions about uh, any problem, about any points that may have been confused. That may take part at the end of the lecture or uh, in a comfort time. We may uh, take into account the unique, it's uh, a mistake here, uh, the unique uh, writing differently, 
an heterogeneous characteristic. Each case of dyslexia is unique and heterogeneous. Uh, therefore, what is needed is an individualized, individualized approach to it. A special program for one dyslexic uh, student may be not equally successful for another dyslexic student. We need, therefore, a differential diagnosis for each of them. How to communicate with the learning disabled? Print keywords on the board. Explain them if necessary. And avoid a cursive handwriting. Allow enough time for the student with dyslexia to write them in his paper. Use a color marker on the board and explain shortly the main points uh, referring particularly to some daily life experience of the student. Avoid asking the dyslexic student to read out loud and or with speed. Encourage the student to show you a rough drive, uh, draft of a programming essay for providing him some feedback before writing the final version. He needs a strong encouragement when doing his work. Allow the use of a laptop or any other technological equipment for uh, in-class work. Try to present lecturing material in small and structuring un structured units. Allow extra time for exams and all preparing uh, issues. Also, ask the student with dyslexia to sit in a proper place in the classroom. An area with minimal distractions is preferable. For example, sitting in front of in front places. Answer to his or her questions raising in any time during the lecture. Explain if necessary to the student about the result of his final exam and perhaps ask him about the type of exam he may prefer. Let's say oral exam. Uh, be optimistic about the success of the student and the university and encourage him for creating cooperation with others in the classroom. Finally, each lecturer should uh, pursue a communication with the administration office at the, at the university for obtaining perhaps further information or related issues. Finally, I think that uh, we should be optimistic and successful in our thinking and in our doing with uh, such students. It is easy to achieve it. Try to read some scientific material related to dyslexia, books, articles in journals, etc. Create a friendly atmosphere in the classroom. This is a very important thing to create a friendly climate in the classroom. Be in contact with the student and out of the classroom if necessary. That's all. Thank you for uh, your attention.